Yes, Cinder, a remix of Dark Souls 3 by Rotaka. Folks, you know what that song means? Oh, yes. I always do. We yep. do now. It's the it's a good song. It's a really oh, good yeah, song. Oh, yeah. It's true, and it even line. tapered off at the end. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> Most of them do. Yeah. And then yeah. it's all like, I'm going to slowly make room for our hosts now. That's right. G- good on your song. Good guy's yeah. song. Well, it's time for Insert Credits Round 56. Shm down. Yeah. Be down. It's even hard to say. Yeah. I kinda yeah. I'll like let it. you do it. I kind of like it. Shm down. Shm down. down. There we are. Shm downa. Not to be confused yeah. with shmup or shm left or shm right. <laughs> Or Shma yeah. North Northwest, yeah. whatever direction you so choose. Shma 257 degrees. That's Shma right. Shma Nona. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Oop, that clicked. Yeah, I did. Wow. Sure did. Yeah. That's how you know it's a good... <laughs> mm, that's yeah. crisping in my ear. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> nice, nice and sparky for you. Well, See, I was smart and didn't bring my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can get louder. If you like me to get louder. Mm, yeah. <laughs> You're no fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Mr. Bond. I'm Tormod. And I'm Saxon. And Sir Credits, God, I love Friday nights. Yes. Yeah. Best. Fridays Pardon. are awesome. Pardon me a moment. Hmm. It's the Friday speaking. Mm. Yeah. And all the vodka's on the top. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Well, I'm well, guessing it's vodka. Crans, right? It is vodka, yes. Okay, yeah. What, well, do, they, what do they actually call it now? I don't know. It's what? it's. I know. I've always called it a vodka crayon. It's yeah. no. Tej actually had a name for it. It oh, was like a Nantucket or something it, like that. Really? Uh, it wasn't like uh, Cape Cod. I don't know. Something oh, it like was that. something to do with like the East Shore. So whatever. Yeah. Well, it's no Arnold Palmer or whatever the drunk golfer one is. So <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Hooray! I don't, even, I don't even know what's in the drunk version of an Arnold, Arnold, uh, uh, Arnold Palmer. Well, obviously yeah. it's tea and lemonade and something. Yeah. I'm guessing it's probably just gonna be yeah. vodka. Yeah, it's, it's some sort of booze. Uh, Either that know. or they just make a a freaking Long Island with lemonade in it. Mm. <laughs> you d- dump in some like crap whiskey or or brandy or no, something. No, 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 no. What you really want to do if you want to be truly low shelf or bottom <laughs> shelf is you use that like uh what the hell would it be that limon vodka. Oh yeah, you're not no, wrong. No, what like you five dollar a bottle, crap? <laughs> yeah. No, what was it? Bacardi had the limon crap, or oh, there whatever. were uh, there were other brands. Fleischmann's there... had a lime vodka apparently, Ooh. but I don't think they had a lemon. <laughs> oh well, good thing. I yeah, guess. right. Yeah, I'm I'm morbidly curious now. <laughs> how, how you don't how need to be they? morbidly curious. You'll die if you drink it. Yeah, that's that's. Kind of what that means. Poison control on speed dial. I'm just telling you how it would go. You don't need to actually try it. <laughs> yeah. We can be satisfied with the realm of thought only. <laughs> oh, Thank God. You. We can make some really terrible um, Moscow mules with lime vodka, maybe. <laughs> Ew, no. no, why? <laughs> Stop with the bad ideas. No, no, that's not good. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> Anyway, anyways, uh, housekeeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Housekeeping, housekeeping. Let's not puke on the house. No, don't. No, mm, you don't no. want to call housekeeping. We're just True. doing a little. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, this is round fifty-six. Round fifty-seven is uh, the fifteenth of June. Yeah, that sounds right. I suppose I should look at the calendar. Now. Round fifty-eight, the thirteenth of July. Indeed, it'll be a week that after I'm on call. Sweet, it's not going to line up with on call this time. Yes. Nice. Are you on call tonight? No. Okay. Good. Neither am I, I don't think. It's every yeah. seven weeks now, which is weird. Seven weeks? That's a very odd number. Except one of our team members is retiring, so who knows? It might be altered for the rest of the year now. I don't know what the hell is going on. Weird. So, yeah, it could change. <laughs> who knows? Well, whatever. Yeah. Uh, around 59, the 17th of August. Indeed. I don't know if we went any further out than that, did we? Oh, we did. Round 60, the 14th of September. Yeah, and that's as far as we went. Is it? It is. But we could do the 19th of October. Uh, or would you prefer the 12th? Sh- no, we should we could do either one. What what like how we are we drifting late in the month or Uh yeah, we should probably bring it back a little. Let's do the 12th. Okay, 12th it is. Oh, wow. That's going to be like wedding uh, after wedding week. Awesome. That is uh yes, correct. Man, I'm going to have a hell of a lot of shit to talk about from the marathon. I want to say that's around 62 if number serves. Uh sure. We'll just go with that. Whatever. Fix it in post. Can't round, do much of that no. anymore. According to the calendar, it's around 61. 61? Really? Yeah, because September is 60. And August yep. is you, 59. Yep, you're yep. right. I mathed incorrectly. Yeah, that's whatever. I didn't even Big think of numbers. Shock. 
Big room hoes. <laughs> no, yeah. stop it. Don't spoil. Yeah. Not yet. Don't spoil. <laughs> Mastered. Damn it. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for housekeeping. Around the world, shit that's going on. Uh, very exciting. Lots of stuff mm-hmm. happening around here. Some of it is almost as bad as shit, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, Valve, in their infinite wisdom, will now delay game patches if there's major tournaments going on for that game. Gee. Like Dota 2. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the link to the past randomizer folks should get on that. <laughs> Did they do that too? Yes. Did they really oh, drop one in the middle of a Oh, tournament? yeah. Yeah. They they adjusted the logic so that, oops, we made a lock and pod because we key blocked you from the rest of the dungeon because chests oh, and but, stuff. But it wasn't actually a fix for something that was bad. Yeah. Not it's just not like a rebalance. Yeah. No, they just made a whole new fucking version of the randomizer and dropped it in the middle of a tournament. Uh, don't do that. Yeah. No, no don't. Don't yeah. do that. Did, did they at least generate like more ROMs on the previous version so they could finish the tournament, or did they actually swap it in the middle? Of yeah, the tournament? no, they they actually swapped it in the middle. Oh, don't do that! And that's when everyone's just kind of like, oh, the new bow logic in Pod, and they're like, oh shit, the first seed that they did had a a a run ending bug because the placement oh. of the items they had the key in the back half instead oh, of the front half. No, yeah, wow. that was that was bad. <laughs> Well, all right. Uh, in that case, Rando. I, I kind of understand why they had to do that, though. Like that, but it sounds like that's the no, only thing they that, changed. That was a thing that they introduced with the change, not oh. fixed. Oh, Oops. I thought it was they fixed it. Oh. No, they caused a problem yeah. mid. Uh, mid- see, <laughs> that, that's why you don't oh. do that. And now Valve has learned not to do that, so they won't yeah. do that anymore. So they say. Yeah. Uber lame. Because that same sort of thing happened where they dropped a major rebalancing for Dota 2 in the middle of the Epicenter XL tournaments. Yeah, yeah that, that sounds like a bad idea. It's not a great idea. No. No. You're better, Valve. You should know how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you've only been around for 15 years now, at least. Yeah, yeah and Dota 2's been a big thing for, I want to say, at least three or four years? Yeah, you really don't get that. to choose to not update. Steam is all like, hi, updating yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, you're fucked, Even in buddy. offline mode, it's just kind of like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're online. Hey, 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 hey listen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to let you launch the game, fucker. <laughs> Damn it. I think you can cancel an update, though, can't you? If you catch it in the middle of whatever. Yeah, but it's still not going to let you play. It's going to be like the, the Windows roulette, so... Oh, yeah. womp womp. Good luck. Unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, well. and Steam, you can't just be like, hey, it's uh, I want to install this version. No. No, I know. Mm. Yeah, that's fairly common. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, well. Uh, so Steam Spy, whom we discussed was dead and, and or dying last time, is not dead. It's been revived. It's been revived. They're starting to use machine learning rather than direct access to public user game libraries to do their prediction stuff. Intriguing. So even less accurate than before, but still yeah. there. Eh. That's that's not inaccuracy. That's just character. That's just algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like lemon yeah. vodka. Uh, anyway. Mm-hmm. Lemon no. vodka is not an algorithm. No, it's not. It's a <sighs> booze with a little bit of flavor. <laughs> Go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it ain't, but go off. <laughs> Mega Man 2 and Mega Man X are getting legit physical re-releases. They're very expensive. Very expensive yeah. and very, very blue. Yeah. Very how, blue wait, How blue cartridges. are we talking? Like, shockingly blue cartridges. Oh. Like, yeah. you, you know, the gold carts for Legend of Zelda and Legend of Zelda 2? Yeah. Like that, but bright-ass blue. Like, this bright-ass blue. But it's not metallic. Blue. It's yeah. plastic blue. Correct. Okay, I was uh, all like... And mit- it's made by a company who normally would make repros of other things. That's true. Uh, I am 8-bit, yes. I want to say. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. So, that's... Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be hands. quality, then. It's in good hands. However, yeah. very limited edition. 8,500 of each to be made. Mm-hmm. Selling for 100 bucks a piece. Mm. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, it's wow. a hard sell. Yeah, mm. that's... um. Not for me, yeah. <laughs> but hey, good for them. Yeah, yeah, good for them that they're reproing some mm-hmm. of the more popular variants of the title. Yeah, mm-hmm. an official limited repro is, especially for Mega Man, though, is, is uh, will definitely be valuable for some. It'll sell. They, yeah. they, they, they won't have trouble finding buyers for that. Yeah. Goodness me. Ah, also something we kind of discussed last time, NVIDIA's GeForce Partnership Program. Yeah. It's gone. It's <laughs> gone. They had a whole bunch of bad press around it. Some deserved, probably most not, but hey, whatever. But they yeah. dissolved it because of all the bad press. Mm-hmm. Eh. 
Nobody there thought it was going to be a bad idea in the eye of the public. Yeah, apparently not. They didn't run <laughs> it uh, through uh, PR or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Not really much of value was lost there, I don't think. But hey, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we're mm. not going to miss it. A couple uh, controller updates going on. Valve slash mm -hmm. Steam VR now allows custom mappings even for controllers that haven't been invented yet. Hmm. So, generic control input devices, you can map them into Steam VR shit. Very cool. Yeah, neato. So what, what does it do? Is just like kind of wrap uh, whatever the existing API is and make it pretend it's a Steam controller of some I, sort? I guess it's something built into Steam itself where you yeah. just map, map some controls and you're good to go. No? Yeah, the, it is literally just part of Steam options, controllers, and it just brings up the stupid big picture mode so you can do your freaking controller edits. Oh, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, big picture mode. Yeah, it's not the greatest. No. But whatever, that's the interface they use for all the controller yeah. stuff. And I had to dick around with that for two nights to get fucking FF15 to work. Yeah. <sighs> with some exotic control setup that you were doing? No, I literally plugged a PS4 controller in with USB. Yep. Oh. <laughs> and it Pretty was exotic. all like, oh, if you don't have big picture mode or, the, no, the Steam overlay enabled, all the controller functionality ceases to work. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, we found that out the hard way. Oh, the overlay sucks ass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So I just turned off all the parts of the huh. overlay and let the overlay stay resident in memory, and then it was okay. Eesh. Tangent overlays can all just eat shit. Yeah, the they're NVIDIA they're overlay, great. the Steam overlay, all of those. Like, just go eat away and let us play. Die. Well, I mean, there. that's good to know if I ever needed to do that stuff, because I'd be confused as heck, because I disable the overlay all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard rumors, though, that some, like, super generic devices that already exist are being blacklisted by it, which is kind of odd. Really? Yeah, like, they just straight up don't work and are not recognized by this new Steam thing. So it's like... Uh, uh, what, like, any particularly popular ones? Or? Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. Hmm. I, this, again, all, all it is is rumors, so I don't know if it's yeah. exactly true, but if it is, that's kind of silly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But something better control-wise, Microsoft has unveiled their Xbox Adaptive Controller. Yeah, oh, I, yes, I've seen have. some amazing photos of that. That is a really cool hacking controller. It is. It's not pretty by any stretch. It's a big old box or whatever. Yeah. With but it's plugs awesome. and ports and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's got two massive, like, really soft touch buttons on the front, plus normal D-pad and some system buttons. And then on the back, it's got 19 3.5 millimeter inputs that you can hook up to any other, like, accessibility tools and yeah. shit. Yep, pretty That's neat. Rad. Yeah, way so to go. You can you can really extend on that and just kind of like make you know make your own controller out yeah, of it if you it need is, to. It is super great. So props to Microsoft for that. Yeah. The only thing that made me kind of worry about it is that their thumbsticks look suspiciously like uh, Wii nunchucks, and Nintendo might be like, hey. <laughs> But, yeah, it's whatever. It's not really meant for thumbsticks, though, yeah. so I'm not really that shocked. Well, it also does have profile mapping on the fly. I think you can save three and then just boop, boop, boop. Nice. Nice. Without having cool. to close shit and reopen shit and mm -hmm. restart the console or whatever. So yeah. they've, they've done some good work with this one, so it seems. Nice. And it's actually pretty cheap, 100 bucks. Mm. That is pretty Which, cheap for Microsoft hardware. Yeah. For Microsoft hardware and for uh, accessibility-focused hardware is really surprisingly cheap totally but good good on you microsoft where yeah. you go we're just gonna there what you did profilese oh yeah i saw that <laughs> i was just like what is this word and then you said profiles and i was like oh what in your notes you said switchable profilese oh thank you yeah, yeah. You, had a, you had a tapayo in there somewhere okay I yeah got i you. was just like what the fuck is i that accidentally <laughs> a word well no i didn't accidentally a word all the words were there yeah, yeah. it was just not the correct word or a it's word. It's an anagram. It's fine. It's yep. whatever. My, my eyes saw it as fine. It's, yep. good. it's all good. <laughs> We're cool. So a cr recent Chrome update that auto muted all videos and shit <laughs> by doing and audio all mm -hmm. a favor forcibly, except for the top 1000 websites or whatever oh. also has the unintended side effect of breaking pretty much any legacy web based games. Yeah. Yeah. Most of which are likely not to receive updates to fix it because devs have either lost the code, lost control of it, don't fucking give a shit, which I can't really blame them. Yeah. But they've wiped out a whole bunch of shit just by doing this one weird update, which, you know, on its face is nice. Yeah. But collateral damage is kind of a thing. So they've reversed that for now. Do doctors hate it? Uh, I don't know. I haven't consulted four out of five dentists yet either. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say because, you know, it's this one weird it thing. It is this one yeah. weird yeah. thing. Yeah. 
I had to derail. He did. Yay. It was worth it. Good work. You, you did it. Yay. Shiva unlocked. Yay. Um, so they've already reversed course on that, but they're going to re-implement it in Chrome 70, which is uh, da, 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 sometime around October, I want to say, is when they plan to release it. <laughs> so yeah, so like they're like, oh, we made a mistake. We'll flip it back, but fix your shit before our October. Yeah, they claim <laughs> that they weren't communicating it properly, so they wanted to pull it back and give yeah. people more time and whatever and... Naturally, everybody else is saying, well, you guys didn't really do a whole bunch of research on this beforehand, so consider a different course before you do this again, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't say I disagree because that's kind of garbage. As much as I hate autoplay shit yeah. like that, mm -hmm. this is really sketchy. Yeah. Google, you can do much better than this. Mm -hmm. You really can. At least make it turn offable or tunable. Nope, just auto mute. Mm hmm. I had to hack my Chrome config to allow me to mute tabs again instead of mute entire sites because that's oh. what it changed it to. Oh. So if you would like right click on one Twitch tab and be like, I want to mute this, and it would mute site and mute all of them. And I'm oh, like, that's not what I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lame. So there, yeah, there's some hacky crap you can oh. do to fix that, but that's something I had to do. Like the other thing they do with that is uh, site zooming. Like zooming in yeah, and out, it's yeah. per site, not per tab, it's right? It's so fucking dumb. Well, no, don't do that. It's dumb. Because like, I like to zoom in on my Twitch chat, exactly. and then it also makes my dashboard like, oh my god, bloated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't make it domain-based, just tab-based or whatever. It doesn't fuck. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be another setting I, I figured out how to do, or will figure out how to do tab-based. Some weird UX stuff they got going on there. Yeah, maybe allow you to choose whether you want it like per tab or if you want to do zooming for a whole site. I mean, mm -hmm. like there are new sites... Um, you know, sometimes even Twitter, I'll zoom it out, and I don't have to keep re-zooming it out every time I go to the site. Sounds you know, like stuff I need like to that. do some about config stuff. How yeah. the heck did I just do whatever I just did? I don't know. I don't mm. know what you just did. You're so like, oh man, you. about config. Oh shit. <laughs> no, I just like brushed off my trackpad, and suddenly Chrome had kind of a, a little freak out. It triggered there. a gesture of some description. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's whatever. That's it. That's that's all I got for news. What else? Well, what else is EA's back in the news again. Oh. And they're being shitheads oh, again. Oh, jeez. That's oh. a big surprise. You sure yeah. this is news? <laughs> so uh, they're continuing their loot box campaigns despite regulations. Oh, no. Buy our oh. shit, assholes. Yeah. yeah, I did hear about that. Okay, yeah. So they can go die in a fire. Moving on. Yeah, you know, the. <laughs> There's there was something that's, I guess, tangentially related, but um, I guess there's... Uh, um, they're in, they're allowing states to like reopen online gambling and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure that EA is going to reach into that as justification for uh, what they're doing. Yeah. You're talking about the Supreme court ruling thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very mm. recent, like this week, I think they didn't legalize it. They just made it unillegal for states to regulate. Yeah. Which I mean, I They're going to do the same damn thing. I have to be in favor of it because I work in that industry yeah. now. So it's good. I think that I think it's overall good, and that's not just me pandering to who I yeah, work Oh, yeah, for. fair. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's all right. I, I will forgive your self-preservation. Hey, man. <laughs> Gotta eat. It's true. Yeah. <sighs> Gotta buy game. <laughs> okay, that's the more important part there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, okay. Priorities yes. straight. That's right. It's the best. Moving on. Some World of Warcraft news back from 2010. What? It's modern now. Shut up. Colin Mateus, a man from Romania, has been charged with leading DDoS attacks on World of Warcraft back in 2010. Wow. Mm. And has now finally been sentenced to a year in federal prison here in the United States. Because the servers are here, so extradite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's say, how the hell? If yeah. They got, if hmm. the country is, if they have, you know, extradition stuff. Yeah. Yep, and this I'll guy apparently was already on some federal lists for doing some shit in the past mm. and ended up pleading his way out of those other things if he pled guilty for this. So, right. yeah. So a year in the pen versus probably many years in yeah. the pen. Okay, yeah. you know, fair, fair, fair. So, whatever. More World of Warcraft news. Its in-game currency is currently worth more than seven times the Venezuelan Boulevard. Well, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. What about the Venezuelan cryptocurrency that never got off the ground? Yeah. I don't even know what it is. So I don't know what it's good. called. It was, I think it was named after the president or dictator, whoever they got over there. Yeah. Uh, sure. Socialist president of some sort. That's as much as I'm aware really? of. Really? Are they socialists? I want to say well, so. According socialist. to NPR from an interview earlier this week, maybe I'm thinking wrong. I but see. Yeah. 
Anyway. Socialist in the same sense that North Korea is democratic. Y- and maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. All right. Moving on. <laughs> yes, please. Let's talk about a happier line of democracy. How about Canada? Woo! A likely fake list of games has been leaked from Walmart Canada. Sorry. So yeah, right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually see if I can get to this page real quick and see what delicious things it has on it because uh, if it I mean if it's got Half Life Three, uh, <laughs> I don't think it does. But um. It has things that we already kind of knew about, like Smash Brothers to Switch and whatnot. But uh, it yeah. also has things like Borderlands 3, Dragon Quest 2, uh, Gears of War 5, etc. Mm. Yeah, that last one probably is like, eh. yeah. yeah. So they're probably um, banking on like they're gonna keep making Gears of War forever. So yeah. Well, they also have this Wheel of Fortune Jeopardy crossover, so well, or combo pack or something. That's so. not that far out of left yeah. field. I know, but <laughs> Jeopardy of Fortune. <laughs> Yeah, right? And apparently it also says Final Fantasy VII Remake for PS4. And I'm like, hmm, uh, already. Either that or it's a pre-order that'll never be... Never mind. Well, isn't? <laughs> I hope that's in your list. Yeah. Okay, well, good. supposedly that's going to be coming out this year. What? Supposedly. What's, what is coming what? out? No. Okay, so there's, there's some hot rumor shit going on with FF7. This is a great segue that I forgot to put in my notes. Um... Apparently, they've been bringing everything back in-house. Okay, yeah, yeah. And some recent interviews say that they're going to have a lot of good things to show soon, which pretty much means E3. Mm. Yeah. So that could just be like, guess what? Here's your gameplay. Here's your story. Here's everything coming in winter of 2018, maybe. <laughs> or maybe like, oh, hey, we took this FMV that you all remember from the first game uh, and we right. rented it in the new system, but we're not going to show you shit. Well, the other thing that people are speculating is, well, maybe they'll get it done for the 30th anniversary of FF. So, which would be like 2021, 22, I can't That's quite remember. That's what I heard about was yeah. like the 2020s when it was finally coming so out. So it's maybe kind that of was just a rumor. I, I mean, there's there's rumors of both. So okay. that's why I'm like, okay. well, let's present both. So, I mean, I don't want them to rush it. At the same yeah. time, please don't make this take another 10 years. I'm looking at you, 15. It's so weird because like Final Fantasy VII was what, like 1996, 97, 97 something like yeah. that? Yeah. And you got to think like, okay, it's been long enough where those of us who are nostalgic about it have burned the heck out about it. Like, you know, because we've played it over and over again. And like, you know, the kids who are just getting into gaming are like, what's Final Fantasy VII? Like, they, they can't be nostalgic about it because they weren't around. They Regardless, remember. there's still a lot of hype for it. And yeah. if they keep the fucking hype train going like they did with FF15 because it was oh, renamed during boy. the project... Because it was supposed to be a totally different game at one point, because it was supposed to be some crisis, whatever, happy fun time thing, but then they actually put it into the mainline games. It had a totally different story to it at first, but whatever. That went along for 10 years, and it finally got released, and the people rejoiced, yay, etc. Yeah, so, hmm. rejoiced briefly, and then the next, you know, series of releases came out. Yeah, pretty much. So, on to Nintendo news. Nintendo's online service for the Switch launches in September, finally! For only $20 a year, so it's different than all the other pricing schemes that we saw. Or it could be up for $35 a year for up to eight users to use it. So if you have a large family, you can all back up your saves and profiles and shit for up to eight people. So that's pretty neat. Um, Those features include, as I just mentioned, the online save backups, a library of NES games that can be played online in some fashion, which apparently changes on the month. And the ability for online matchups and leader replacement. So... This could be their their little mm. sly introduction to virtual console stuff that would be more no. like PlayStation mm. Plus. I mean, they they had said, uh, I want to say it was earlier this month, um, that uh, um, at least they told, I want to say it was Kotaku maybe, that there were no plans to do virtual console on the that's Switch. That's since mm. been walked back. Oh, that so, I didn't know. Tell uh, us more. Well, that's as much as I know. <laughs> is apparently that was a misunderstanding of sorts. Ah. And that this right. NES thing was being introduced with the Switch. I mean, when it goes on with its online stuff. So, gotcha. whatever. We'll figure something yeah. out. People are already playing um, GameCube games on Dolphin on the Switch with the new um, Tegra exploit. So, never yeah. mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, amongst... Hey, that's a virtual virtual console. Shut up. Yo, dog. <laughs> amongst all those things, still no official local save backups. Yes, you are correct. It's still uh, shit. Yeah. Ugh, uh, forever. Yeah, you're not wrong. So, <laughs> I'm with you. Trust me. I feel it. 
Um, better have internet access when you hit that save point. Just saying. Mm -hmm. So, there's tons of other Nintendo Switch stuff coming out. Obviously, we already talked about quite a few things like Smash Brothers and whatnot. But mm -hmm. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate just kind of dropped. And like, here you go. <laughs> this is coming on the 28th of August. Enjoy. And people are like, oh, no, another Monhun game. Because they call it Monhun, apparently. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that they do. And it's just well, like Pokemon. Yeah, right. Um, and in, I guess, one more Switch thing that just came out today, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. And apparently <laughs> there's already a world record for it because somebody submitted a run. Oh, one run, I, it's the world yeah, record. Yeah, I, nice. <laughs> if you're first, you always get the world record. Yeah, I guess. And you could say you're the former world record holder. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Guinness much cares about former world record yeah. holders. <laughs> But you're not lying when you go around <laughs> saying like, it. Oh, it was his face. <laughs> <laughs> Billy oh. <Mitchell. laughs> yeah. I just wanted to bring that up again. Eat it, loser. I, I, <laughs> saw, I off, saw that in the notes from last last uh, show, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. Also I mean, Switch-related, they're uh, releasing Ikaruga for Switch. Yeah. In vertical support mode. <laughs> nice. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Gosh, I haven't played Ikaruga in years. It's been a while. Yeah. That's well, just hard the kickstand on it does do that. So does it? I'm pretty sure it does. I could be wrong. I thought like the new twenty dollar whatever charge and play stand whatever does, but not the um Maybe I'm misremembering something. I don't know. Shrug. I'm not a doctor. Nobody is. No, what? Really, not really. Okay. No. But, but but I played one on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> That's yeah. right. I believe it was Dr. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mario. No, Tetris 2 and Dr. Mario. That was the yeah. thing. God damn. Anyway, why don't you go ahead and go on your news that's conveniently pulled up on my laptop so you can see it. Yeah, but I'm going to pull it up on my phone instead. You're a putz. I am a putz. I don't know why I don't have drive on my on my phone case. But... Cool. Yeah. So, um, we're yeah. professionals. <laughs> so uh y'all know about um hegan i think it's hegan yes mm -hmm. uh so Bu is the author of that and uh they're looking to go back to uh beast nest again um and uh get developing on that um they want to focus on uh better performance because you know you it requires an obnoxiously beefy pc compared to other emulators to you know <laughs> to really get going um and uh a more friendly ui um which is kind of the chief complaint that's a good idea yeah and uh you know they also want to continue maintaining the highest compatibility like usual so um so yeah super nintendo emu heads rejoice Woo, good work yeah. everybody um so uh world of warcraft the uh for the you know battle for azeroth expansion uh they've left alpha and, and entered beta um and uh so Everyone who got an alpha invite also got beta access, and then they open it up to a whole bunch more people. So, but they're not out of beta yet. Wow! No, they don't in... know if they're going to be releasing on time. Wow. Okay, what? Nice. I see. I, I got you. <laughs> they're they're probably going to release it no matter what. Uh, yeah. I won't sing. On time is whatever you choose it to be. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um. Wow. Wow. God damn it, Owen Wilson. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All wow. Right, fine. This is so dumb. Bam. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there you go. Nice. All right. We got it covered. Yeah. Woo. All right. Um, this guy has an emote for it. God. <laughs> yep. Go uh, on. <laughs> Throw me off here. Wow. Uh, so the, uh, the final two characters uh, were revealed for Octopath Traveler. Um, and, of course, it was just as fans had suspected the first letter of all the names spell out Octopath. Because, of course, they would do that. Each character, O, C, oh, T, yeah. Oh, right, I get you. Yeah. I am hella pumped for that game, by the way. Oh, yeah. I have not yet actually installed the demo for it, but apparently you can play it for hours. It's great. Was that a spiritual successor to something? It's a new RPG series that's very similar to the Bravely series. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, But it's, it's a... not like it's a replacement for it. However... It gets kind of dark. There is a storyline about a prostitute being abused. Oof. So, yeah, that's, yeah. That's some, I'm not going to spoil too much deep. more. But, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, this this game doesn't just kind of, like, get all happy, like, fluffy, feely, mm, this is good shit all the time. 
wholesome warriors of light will always win at the end of the day kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like it's on you to make that happen. Yeah, pretty much. And there are many alternate routes through this game. And some things you can only trigger if you go with certain characters in certain places and whatnot. So that's the kind of branching storyline that I like. Hi, Chrono Trigger. I've missed you. Like visual novel style? I'm not even... Well, mm. no. It's not <laughs> a porno, so... Oh, oh boy. I just thought of another news item in regards one to that, doesn't actually. Ne- one doesn't necessitate the other. I'm just saying. So I know what so things does, you're uh, thinking about. Steam, apparently. <laughs> Never mind. Please continue. All right. No. No. Hmm. no. Hmm. Yeah. What was that game that people told me to play without looking at it first? Oh, that... don't do that. Why would you listen to people like oh, that? Oh, it's, it's, yeah. No, it's that new visual novel that's free. It's also, was it like the creepy one? Apparently. I'm yeah. not supposed to know about it, but I forget the name. Yeah. I mean, Chat can tell me they know what it yeah. is. One, don't blind play visual novels that you've never heard of. That's that's a recipe for bad news. <laughs> well, no, I mean like it's it's notorious for a reason. But yeah. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. Doki like, Doki Literature Club. That, yeah, that's, that's the, one. the one. Okay. Yeah. yeah mm. Hey, uh, thank <laughs> you. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to play that on stream. I might just start crying or something. <laughs> so I could probably tell you when you should stop playing it on stream. <laughs> oh. I imagine at that point oh. it's it's really yeah. self-evident. Do people like combust? <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, yeah. So um, we're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, so AMD. Um, has uh they introduced the Ryzen Pro with Radeon Vega line. Um it's kind of their new APUs basically mm-hmm. with with Vega built in. Um and uh HP is super on board. They're launching like a really large product line for this kind of thing. Um like they're hmm. <laughs> they're really invested in this. So. They also have a bunch of uh new laptops in the mid-range that have all the new Ryzen chips in it like yeah. the Ryzen 5 and 7. So that's it's pretty like 20, cool. 2400 u or something like that or even higher they've higher, got yeah. some with the 25 series and it's like 550 bucks for a laptop and i'm like oh hmm. yeah hmm. or just you know really solid amount of hyper threading performance there so or uh multi-threaded performance rather yeah so yeah, they're just they're uh <laughs> they're, they're punching back to back this year it's it's uh kind of fascinating did you see their new gpu it's basically two gpus in one no i didn't see that oh i'm pretty sure i linked that to you yeah, you may have. But it was like a... Fuck. Um, let me see if I can find it again because it actually looked really interesting. Of course, it's just like a, a mid-year refresh or something because they're not going to do anything super new until next year. But mm-hmm. let me see what I can find in links because we're talking about AMD stuff and I may as well talk about that too. Do, 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 do. Oh, installing Windows 1 through 10, yeah. Oh, uh... yeah. The, so I, it, it came up in the office uh, earlier this week and, and I turned to someone and I'm like, you know... Like, oh, do you think is. that uh, starting from, like, early Windows, can you get all the way to 10 using just upgrades? And he's like, I got a video for you. So he links me a video that's, like, a couple hours long going, like, through the entire, like, 9X range up, up to ME and then Ugh. switching to NT3.5 and then going all the way up to Windows 10. Ugh. <laughs> well, this is not the right link, but you I'm pretty sure to, I can find it. They did have to change the file system, like, twice. Yeah. With the with a special utility, so that you know it wasn't hmm. like from scratch install, but so all upgrades from one up to modern, huh? Yeah, and apparently you can do Why? it. Why? Oh no, that sounds like a waste of time. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, that, that, that's the only reason you do it is to waste oh. time. Well, on the note of those cheap laptops, the uh, HP Envy X three sixty thirteen has a Ryzen twenty five hundred Q. Neat. Hmm. Um. Da, da, do. Wow. I. Wow. 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 <laughs> I swear I found that um other graphics card in here yesterday. What the hell? And it's just not in the AMD subreddit. Maybe I was just dreaming it, but yeah. whatever. I, I swear I read something about a mid-year refresh of whatever Vega crap that was out there. Mm. Uh. And people were like, yay, it's almost as fast as the 7000 series, except not quite. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's... Womp <laughs> womp. Yeah. Yeah, it's whatever. They so. they have a little distance to cover for for GPUs, but um I'm kind of hoping that like the success that they see on the CPU side will allow them to, you know, kind of push forward uh and their other endeavors. That'd be neat. Yeah. 
Let's see some real competition. Chicken video in the butt. <laughs> keeps them funded. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, supposedly the 1180 is going to be, gosh, what was it? July. Well, no. No, I'm thinking that it was supposedly going to be, God, what the hell am I thinking here? No. Sorry, the 1170 is going to be more powerful than the 1080 is by some margin. TI or not? Non TI. Probably non TI, no. I would guess. And I'm kind of thinking. Hey, it's still. not a huge bump then. The 70 to the outperforming the. Maybe it is the TI. Yeah, that that's a lot more impressive. That would be something. Gosh, I, I just don't have the, the hard numbers in front of me because, again, I forget to write yeah. this shit down yeah. when I'm reading it. But. Um, well, rumors abound of release dates for the 1180 or 2080, whatever the fuck they're going to call it, is end of July. July. End of yeah. July. Yeah. Yeah. So now the reference card prices are falling below MSRP finally. Yeah. Like consistently. About fucking time. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, I'm still kind of inclined to wait for the 1180 Ti, but at the same time, I need another graphics card. Because I'm building a PC and I need more than one. Yeah, can you just like pick up another 1080 Ti or something? No, I'm not gonna do that. If that shit's coming out in July, I'll just pick up an 1170, have less power, and be more powerful than it. Yeah, or something. Or have it push the prices down on the previous gen. And... That's exactly dude, that's what or I was whatever talking the about. Case. But I mean, Old my... triggers all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> my thing is if the new architecture is going to use less energy and be more um, thermally efficient. I'm going to want that inside yeah. of a tight case. Yep. So that's why I'm saying, well, I may as well just get whatever the hell I need in July. Yeah. I'm not going to be building anything super for real until then anyway. So. Yeah. But if if it does end up being July, that's going to be really convenient. So especially if there's general availability and you don't have to fight people for them. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's just the official NVIDIA whatever founders editions and then the third party add-ins or. Well, those that. usually show up about two months after, yeah. but. Like yeah. the Founders Editions, I had a Founders Edition 1080, I think. Yeah, and the blower really sucked on it. Well, it didn't blow, <laughs> did it? <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, the coolers on, but, on uh, like the cards that NVIDIA put out uh, are really not impressive. Like the the ones from EVGA, uh, you know, and other such companies. Pretty much like, everybody else has yeah, better air coolers. Absolutely fantastic Thanks. coolers. But, I so. mean, at this point... Everybody ends up buying the Founders Edition of the cards anyway, and that's what a lot of those um, third-party water blocks are based on. So you just sure. unscrew the cooler, boop, hook it up to some fan outputs on your, your case, and you're good. Yeah. And honestly, at this point, I'm starting to get kind of turned on to AO or all-in-one coolers. All-in-one coolers are nice. They are so freaking yeah. awesome. This is the first year that I've ever used anything like it, and certainly won't be the last. We're, we've only had <laughs> good no. experiences with uh, with all-in-one coolers. They're about the same price as a decent air cooler anyway at this point. When I find yeah, them on sale for less than 90 bucks. It, I okay, mean, the, the high-end Noctuas are still probably like 65 70 bucks. Yeah. But yeah. there are ones that are definitely more expensive. Yeah. Like Cooler Master's big-ass tower coolers are still more expensive than 100 yeah. bucks. So They're big V12s or whatever the fuck they're up to <laughs> The one to that, now. you know, Just, that tall. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Remember those 930 PCs that we built and the coolers are too tall for the case? Yeah. Yeah. I do remember. I bought one. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Womp. That was a thing. So... Yeah, those exist. But honestly, with water cooling, it's like, oh, have this tiny little thing sitting on top of your CPU, and it just has hoses that go to radiator that's mounted somewhere else. Yeah, it's and it's inc so nice. Like the Corsair it's one that we got uh, is incredibly silent. What's the, the model on that? Uh, it's the H100 IV2. We yeah. also have the H80 IV2, which is a single 120 millimeter, which we were planning to use at one point, and I'm going to end up using it in a different case now. But um yeah the the h100 iv2 is extremely versatile it includes a mounting bracket for the last four years of intel processors yep um the am4 uh thread ripper actually ships with a bracket that goes on any of the water coolers that use the nice. same kind of mounting system nice. yeah you just clamp on the one that's on there turn it a little bit pops out you put this one on you just boop right there it's so simple oh yeah um I mean, like, I love the fact that with the HADI, when I was kind of auditioning it with our different hardware, when shit worked. Yeah. Um, I tested it on the, um, God, what the hell, the 6700K worked mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. 
Um, threw it on the 4771, worked fine. Had the uh, Ryzen 770 or 2700, that worked fine, mm-hmm. X. And the Threadripper's like, I already got my own bracket, bitch. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, that's cool, plap. Yeah. And it's kept I, every every single one of those processors really cool, even the Threadripper. Yeah. So if I didn't dick around with voltages and whatnot, um, the load temperature never got above 72. And that's with, you know, going for several hours and it just thrashing it with Prime 95. Yeah. Because I use Prime 95 for hours at a time just to make sure shit's stable. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a real huge fan of that stuff. So being able to get water blocks now, Corsair is starting to come out with them for GPUs in theory. That's what I've kind of heard rumors of. Instead of having to go buy all of the other stuff, where it's like you have your own custom radiator, you put it on there, and you put your yeah. own salinated fluid in there. I'm like, no, I'm not, not up for that. <laughs> so the all-in-one GPU coolers, there's some out there, but they're starting to become more commonplace. So honestly, I would feel just fine about buying a Founders Edition card and then just slapping a cooler on once they're released because even the mid tower case that we've got now it's like okay there's one two three four five six seven fan slots so okay we're gonna vent the gpu out the side plap Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. done so it's so nice and that's another thing you know is while i'm pimping out other corsair shit that new mid tower case that we got that's really freaking sweet the carbide, whatever, whatever, whatever it was. It was, if ADR. I took the feet off of it, I can put it in a freaking server rack and obviously I need a shelf for it. But I mean, it's that compact. Huh. It's about like five and a half U tall. Yeah. If you sit in on its side, it barely fits the board though. Uh, like height wise. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I'm able to fit the radiator in there, a whole mess of other fans. Um, it's really cool because like you have both sides of the case that come off Obviously, the motherboard has to mount to something, so right, there's yeah. uh, there's a plane where it has the standoffs and whatnot. You do all of your cable management behind it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you also have, you know, your two and a half inch little things where you can snap an SSD into. You have some three and a half inch bays there for your actual platter drives. Mm-hmm. That shit's nice. Like, it keeps all the cabling out of the way, and your cooling can actually go across the case. Yeah. So... Cases well, then, are so nice these days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Corsair just came out with another one that's in the 45 to $50 range. That looks really great. Mm-hmm. And it's about the same form factor. So, yeah. I mean, there's a whole lot of really cool hardware coming out this year. So, yeah. I love to get RGB one of those new cards. RGB is on all of it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I've turned I, it off on literally everything. Yes, please I used to do that. A video <laughs> showed up in my playlist uh, today. Uh, and, oh. You're, you're going to love this if one. If anything, going to a Founders Edition card is going to get rid of the RGB on my graphics card, which can only Fair be enough. turned off with the utility in Windows Ew. because the card's BIOS has it on by default. No. But I got to tell you, the, the, uh, <laughs> the video that I was talking about showcased, are you ready for this? An RGB SSD. What the fuck? <laughs> I have heard about those, yes. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. I don't it, like it. <laughs> Hey, the great part is like the companies that are manufacturing oh, all these RGB it. controllers are all different. So you need like if if you have three different companies with RGB controllers, you need three different pieces of software to control them. <laughs> Can we not? <laughs> Can't you, you don't? don't? Yeah. <laughs> there. There we go. There it is. Nice. Oh. Well, it's like the same stupid shit where you have firmware for a mouse pad now. So it's like, yeah. oh, god damn it. Um what? Yeah. <laughs> An RGB mouse pad, no doubt. That's what the firmware no, is for. Excuse me, no less. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't hurt it. the hardware, please. I uh, <laughs> deliberately did not. Uh, so anyways, any other gaming-related news? I know yeah. hardware is <laughs> oh, yeah, related absolutely. to gaming. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much yeah, it, except just... for your retro project, your imaging game discs. Yeah, so um, I thought that I had backed up all of the three-and-a-half floppy uh, images Um because I, I managed to find a USB floppy drive at Goodwill, of all places, that worked. Hmm. Uh, so I popped it into, you know, I've been popping disks into it and imaging them and stuff like that. And uh, I came across uh, an image of the original um, Spectrum Holobyte Tetris, which is kind of neat. Um, and, uh, you know, a number of other, um, you know, disks um, and other software from back then. Because it turns out that we don't have, uh, when you compare it to, like, console dumps we don't really have a whole lot of good pc floppy images like that are clean so 
pretty much I just decided that I'm just going to image all of my old software, whatever I had, whatever, you know, like my grandmother had. And, uh, yeah, just kind of upload it somewhere. So. I might be able to get access to a cache of other old stuff if you want to image that, too. If you got like, like, three and a half. Stuff? Like three and a half. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't have a five and a quarter drive, but Damn. I'm hunting one down. Okay, well, so. I've got five and a quarters as well. Yeah. I weren't don't... we looking for a drive controller that converted five and a quarter to USB? I swear we had some sort of mechanism. We tried. We do. Those don't really exist. It, no? it, I pretty much have to hook up a five and a quarter directly to my retro box in Which, order to, oh, to do darn. that. I know, right? It's the same, normal, same just floppy plot. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. But yeah, they 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 do manufacture, uh, and these are kind of rare. But um, I suppose they did manufacture combo drives. It took up one five and a quarter bay, but it had a three and a half and yeah. a five and a quarter yeah. in the same one. I do remember seeing those as well. But those are like a hundred twenty dollars right now on eBay. Oof. So I don't know if I want to spend that much Oof. on it. That's I mean, if they have verified good working drive heads and belts and stuff. Yeah, wow. I mean they're among the the <laughs> later manufactured ones. So. I mean, that could be a worthwhile yeah. investment for um, preservation purposes, yeah. honestly. I guess it really depends like on if we plan on preserving a whole lot more, but I've pretty much imaged all I own. But if you've got stuff... I'm sure I could find some things. Yeah. Because that would be neat, because uh, yeah. where have you been uploading that stuff to? You it's have... just going to our server right now, but... Well, um... yeah, but you... Well, okay, at least for the drivers and stuff, you've been yeah. throwing them on Vogons, yeah. which is an, an, well, an acronym for what? Very old, very old game. games on new systems. Uh, nice. Yeah, they they have the DOS box forum there, but the real the real gem of that uh that place is the retro hardware forums. Um, you know, it's people are st- like they'll they'll create posts there and like talk about you know hardware that they've manufactured specifically to work on old systems and stuff like that, and just mm-hmm. like really bizarre stuff. Wow. And also, like, oh, I found this driver disk for this obscure thing that they only made a thousand of. Here, let me upload the image. Stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a great resource for uh, for retro PC gaming specifically. Um, but, yeah, so that's uh, my project's been kind of, hey, I want to image all my stuff. And I also have pretty much maxed out the retro box, too. I got my hands on a, on a Voodoo 5 5500 wow. uh, since the last show. And... Uh, Holy cow, those things are selling for a whole lot on eBay, but I managed to get a good deal, so and uh subsequently spit in the face of all of the other collectors and replace the fans online. I'm not collecting, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing on it. Not gonna wrap it in plastic or yeah, right. What is it, Lucite or something that <laughs> preserves it forever? That is not a thing I've heard of. No. Yeah. No. Maybe I'm I curious. It. It might not be a real thing. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's actually see what the hell Lucite is. Please don't be porn. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's not porn. Lewd. <laughs> pretty sure. Lucite International, a global leader in acrylics. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, material. A, thing. it's yeah. a material, probably, yeah. They did that with the, um, the server blocks. blades when they were auctioning off the original World of Warcraft, like server blades. Oh, wow. They just stuck it in a brick of acrylic, basically, yeah. and, and just auctioned them off, so... Hmm. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it makes for a great piece on like a shelf or you know like in yeah. a case. It's like formaldehyde for electronics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. You. Yeah. Well, it doesn't smell like formaldehyde though. I should really hope not. Hey, does it smell like ether to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's <What>? the shit. <laughs> Hostess. What? Wow. <laughs> remember their little slogan way back? I went, that's the stuff. Hostess. Uh, I yeah. That. Anyway. Toonski. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. That's All right. <laughs> Moving <laughs> on. Final Ride by Level 99 from Outrun. And a remix from Mega Man X entitled Rolling by Maverick Astley. And then I've got a remix from Shining Force 2 by Ino Keskitalo called 60 Force Techno.
see who needs an extended fade out. You just get yeah. something like really sweet and to the point. Boom. Beep boop. Like yeah. It. It, it's much it better. It was a beep than, boop song. Yeah. yeah well, you know, fair enough. I like chip tune. It's just a lot better than just like a huge extended one minute super fade out. It's like, oh. Yeah. Just yeah. pinch it off already. <laughs> Come like, on. We left, we left fade outs in the <laughs> 80s, damn it. Come on. Think of something new. All right. We will play lots of games, right? Yeah, more or less. Yes. I mean, I have, I, like, but... Not anything new for me, particularly. Well, just a, I mean, whatever. Potentially stuff that I might consider running. There you go. See, so, that's, that's the important part. Well, why don't you kick it off? Yeah. Man? Cool. Um, well, I was totally <laughs> not prepared because I had my phone closed. Uh, uh, but I'll get to it. Y'all. We are professional. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but let's All see. Right. Let's see. How long have we been doing this? Like, I counted it up the other day. Oh. We've we've been doing what Seeking Infinity since 2011, I want to say. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then that tapered off as we started insert cards, so it's been like seven ish years, mm-hmm. which is pretty good. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah, like internet time and a normal time, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Things on the internet don't usually last seven so, years. So kudos to yeah. everybody involved, <laughs> <laughs> which is us. Yes. Yeah. Kudos to us. Well, I, I have <laughs> I have not been around as long as as you two have on uh, on ZHP uh, podcast, so. But even still, There's three years, lot. right? Three, yeah, yeah three ish. Something like that. Nice. That's still a long time. Anyways, yeah. I wanted to give you some time to pull up your shit. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate Please it. Please do. Yeah. So um, I got uh, into Tyrion, um, which is a uh, shmup for DOS, probably one of the more popular ones. I want to say it was maybe not that recently, but sort of semi recently put onto Steam as well. Really, maybe I know. Right, I know you got I'm it wrong. for free on GOG when you signed up. Maybe it was GOG. Never yeah. mind. Um, and uh, yeah. In addition to that, uh, Zone sixty six, which is kind of like a top down, um, like, gosh, what would I call it? Just a top down shooter, I guess. Um, where you kind of fly a plane around and and drop bombs on all the targets and stuff you're supposed to eliminate. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, Blake Stone, Aliens of Gold. Ah. Yeah, kind of like a wolf 3D type uh, type shooter, but there's a lot more like technical aspects to it. Um, you know, like uh, whole crap load of secrets and mini maps and informants to save and and uh, you know stuff like that. Um, and also uh, Jill of the Jungle. Um, yes, probably one of my favorite platformers and and uh, certainly one of the uh, um one of the older ones with uh you know like. VGA graphics, but I remember it having some of the weirder jump physics I had ever encountered. Yeah, it's uh, so the frame rate of the game is eighteen point two frames a second. Maybe that's what made it feel so weird. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, when you jump, there's a one frame delay before you actually get into the air, mm-hmm. but you have one hundred percent uh control while you're in the air. There's no acceleration, deceleration, none of that. It's you have like precise control while you're in the air and then it was sort of like tile or half tile based or something yep. like that it was, right it was half tile yeah. so Oof. weird yeah shit. <laughs> it's uh i mean once you kind of get used to it you just sort of get used to the physics but the more quirky parts come along when like different versions of the game give wildly different amounts of hit points to the demons and stuff huh. like that which means that choosing a specific version to run is actually important hmm. but like earlier versions don't have working sound on all computers, so oh mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mm. I'm 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 uh, I'm working with uh, someone um on Vogons to try and come up with like the definitive patched version that has like working lava and water animations because the latest version does not and working <laughs> sound and stuff like that. So, um yeah, they've mm. they've come pretty far. You can patch every version up to that. But uh, but that patched version has has the demons with like so much more hit uh so many more hit points and uh you know like they just annihilate you without being able to one hit kill them which sucks the well, most so so yeah that that wraps it up for like the PC stuff I've also been playing some Pathfinder tabletop uh we're in the middle of a uh, troll king battle which is uh we're not doing so good. So, but it's it's a whole lot of fun. Um, and then, of course, DDR. I have to list that because 
always playing some DDR. Well, you spent so much time and effort restoring that cab. I would hope you are. Oh yeah, putting it to good use. Especially since like we got um the uh, we got Stepmania installed on the PC and inside it, like fully working. Uh, I learned that apparently um you don't need uh a complete hookup. Um, all of like the the button like the pads mm-hmm. actually send their inputs through JAMA. Um, you only need like the extra, um, like communication stuff if you want to be able to to look at the state of each individual sensor underneath the foot panels. But like you can do just the foot panels on JAMA only, which is really fascinating. Hmm. So well, oh well. Too late. Yep, that's that's how we're doing it. We're doing only JAMA for now until I can get the lights working. So All right, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, gosh, that that makes for such a great Step Mania machine. Holy cow! Wow! 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 <laughs> wow! Sky and that's all I've got for gaming. Okay, mine is short. Uh, I played some FF15 when I was testing the new gaming hardware between all of the shit that we had to send back and get back and all that other garbage. It plays. Is that all stable now? We're not expecting any more RMAs? I sure hope it's good. Okay, good, good, It's it's kind of nice. Like, after the the, uh, two RMAs that we had to do, we didn't receive any faulty boards after that, so... Yeah, so when I returned the Asus board to Newegg, because it was within 30 days... um. I got one back that had a working primary RAM slot. And because of that, because we're able to put a DIM in that slot, all of the other DIMs were like, oh, yeah, we'll run at the right speed. Instead of hard clock to 2133, you can't go any faster, hmm. which is really slow for DDR4. That's like the lowest speed. Kind of like the safe speed for DDR4. Okay. That's yeah. the, non, the non-overclock speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and then we had a refurbished... Um, Threadripper board from Gigabyte, and its PCI Express slots work now. Hooray! Woo! And that is in the box with the processor still in the slot. We'll eventually build a PC around it mm-hmm. before the marathon. That needs it, to happen. So it's the only chief complaint that I have about Threadripper is how hard it is to mount the freaking. How hard it is to mount the CPU in the board correctly. Yeah, yeah. I think we went over that last time, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> so we're just going to leave we it there. the same problem when we were doing it the second time. <laughs> but uh, far less. So yeah. regardless, that hardware seems to work now. I haven't played FF15 in a while because I've been playing Tetris games. Um, last time I mentioned that I had a new personal best in Tetris DX with 40 line. Brought yeah. that down to 1 minute and 28 seconds. It could have been a lot faster had I not been stupid, but welcome to games. Ah, uh, the refrain yeah. of the speedrunner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Feels you're, bad, you're pacing man. yourself. You can't get as many PBs if you keep smashing your PBs by so much. Oh, the the phrase oh. is you can't be, you can't PB by too much. That's yeah. what you're looking for. Boy, do I have a story for you. <laughs> uh, well, we'll get to it. But uh, I do plan on getting back into that game soon. However. It would be really nice to be able to play it on an actual Game Boy Color. That would be cool. Or just some system that's portable that I could practice on. Yeah. So I've been thinking about grabbing uh, some variant of the Advance, we'll say. Mm-hmm. And it would have a backlight and whatever. SP. Shrug. We'll figure something SP's out. SP's got probably like the best screen of out of all the Advances. Or I could just get one of those Advances and then get the thing that clamps onto it so I can do capture from it instead of having to yeah. use the GameCube. We'll figure something out. That doesn't really gain you any portability, though. I could get a DS Lite. I just pick it up off the thing. and hmm. But yeah, DS okay. Lite, also nice. Yours, the new one, and that Cobalt and Black combo is the yeah. best. I think they had a second one there. I should, should have told you about yeah. it. Yeah, I, I have a Black oh, well. DS Lite that you can use if you'd like. Yeah, we're going to have to give that a try. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to have to buy the game because um, I'm pretty sure that the Flash Cart only runs in Game Boy mode. I don't think it runs in Game Boy Color mode, but huh. whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, I do want to play more of that, but I've also been playing more Tetris the Grand Master. I've been working on more fundamentals. So that game is interesting in that it has three rotation buttons, mm, that's right. two of which go counter, one goes clockwise. And my big thing was I pretty much, my default rotate button is clockwise. So it's the middle of the three. Uh-huh. And whenever I wanted to do a 180, I would just tap, tap. 
and I would tap so quickly that the game's like, fuck you, even though we're pulling for inputs on every frame, you're not going to get both. You get one. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to so, like it. I've been retraining myself to do AC, so it does counter counter, mm -hmm. and that's been a thing I've been trying to get better at. I did get a personal best. I want to say it was last week. I got another S three. However, um, my S three time was like four minutes and twenty three seconds or something stupid fast. Like that's ridiculously fast for S three. So that was pretty neat. Rotate Almost an S four. So, I don't know. I just got to keep playing the game. Um, a thing that I would like to do is I was playing better on Eon's hardware, and I think I figured out the reason. The switches for my JLF are the silent switch type. And while, yes, I have a diamond restrictor in there, which is what you need for Tetris, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I liked the amount of, like, super chunk, 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 chunk feedback like I was getting like I was shifting a car. Mm -hmm. with um the other joysticks so i think i might actually take those switches out and replace them with normal just whatever switches are supposed to be in there because the silent ones cost more but i like the the effect of how it feels because i like to play with the headphones on and i was just kind of like was i making the move etc mm, okay. so that I was playing it kind of like this where I had one ear off the earphone and it was kind of making me nauseous after a while because of the pressure differential. Yeah, okay, I can see So there, there's going to be a thing. I'm, I'm just going to figure something out. I might use open back headphones instead. Just hopefully your audio input for your microphone doesn't pick it up then. <laughs> it hasn't yet. Good. But I mean, it probably so will. I watch occasional streams where I can hear just slamming on keyboards and joysticks oh, yeah, sure. and shit like that. I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, there, that's fair. That's fair. No. There's only so much you can do about that. Yeah, there is, there yeah. is, depending on what they're using for, you know, voice input or whatever. But it's just like, oh no, please. <laughs> it's like I built my controller out of mouse traps. Exactly. Uh, this is a Model <laughs> M yeah. slapped into a gamepad. No. <laughs> fair. Fair. Yeah um supposedly you can replace them with keyboard switches too apparently hmm. so hmm. just shove some blues in there and be okay I interesting don't know. <laughs> clack, clack, clack. Yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but aside from that um we did have a chance to go to geeks mania nice. they've expanded a lot what since oh they, my what, gosh since yes when like recently i guess it's, since the last time i was there the whole, which was like nine months ago but oh, okay. like their whole space opened up and it's huge gosh, yeah. Fucking huge. It is over twice the size that it was the last time we went over, like, mm. easily. And I thought that area was just going to be, like, seating in, like, a party yeah. room or something like that. No, no, it's, no it's just more games. Huh? Yeah, it is. It's just cabinets everywhere. Yeah. And they've got, I think, in-air hockey table and a couple pool tables yeah. and DDR. Okay. And... All right, so that was before I went the first time. All right. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah um, I played pinball pretty much the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, I really prefer the older machines. Like, I was getting really good. They had one that's a cocktail-style machine where you sit down and play. Yeah. And I had the top 10 scores on that, so that was cool. <laughs> Poo, all the way down. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry. Tor? Tor, yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's what I've been doing. Or term oh, No, I've been doing Tor. Okay. Not, not Yeah, ass. because, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like us. <laughs> it, hey, actually, TGM won't let you do ass. Yeah, I know. A lot of arcade games won't. It's so dumb. Yeah, yeah I know. Don't like it. So, I mean, I could just keep alternating tour, mod, tour, mod. You yeah, could. but you I would could. have but to like, plan tour, all my tour, scores. Tour, mod, mod, and, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. shit, damn it. Yeah, yeah. So, so kind of a like a like a side story. So, um, <laughs> it, at the DDR machine in uh, at Ten Pin uh, locally here, um, I. Uh, so there's a course mode where essentially like you play a very specific, you know, course. It's got four songs in it and at the end if you score, you get to enter in a four uh letter Ooh, name for a high score. Four letters. I know, right? Shit. So and oh, I, that. I had pretty much like taken over the whole board and I took a picture of like, you know, a really awesome score that I got. And someone dared me instead of typing in sax uh, like, you know, S-A-X-X, -X, to put sucks instead. <laughs> so I put a U, and I thought it was hilarious, and they thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and I tried for months, knocked that off number one, <laughs> and I haven't. Oh, it's you put still... it as a number one one? Yes, oh, I, no. I, I didn't know it was number one until after I entered it. Like, it tells you, but well, I got, I was all like, oh, whatever, you know, I'm just going to go back and beat it. And I never did. So, <laughs> so it says... 
sucks nice. and then sucks, sacks sucks, all sucks, the sucks, way sucks. down. <laughs> Someday, Brilliant. either I either the flash cart is getting erased or I'm beating it. it one of those two is going to happen. We own our own machine. It's okay now. I know, but... You suck. It's fine. It's the, it's the principle <laughs> of the matter. Uh-huh. <laughs> $300 later. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. I have I have quite a bit more to play before I make back what we paid in the machine, but it's a, a pretty good clip so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's all I played. How about you? All right, so I have played and finished Outland as a, a game from Housemark back in 2011. It's, a, it's not quite an action platformer. It's a platformer with sort of some bits of action to it, and it's got it's kind of set up to be arcadey speedrun type stuff. It was okay. It was okay. Usually people like just drool all over themselves for any sort of hard smart games. <laughs> and this one I play is just like, eh, it's, it's a competent platformer. I won't say it sucks. I won't say it's super great, but it's competent at, at the very least. So it was, it was a, a good bit of fun. It was what it was actually made a drinking game out of it. Oh, like they do a lot of hard cuts away when you trigger cutscenes and stuff that you're supposed to pay attention to. So it's like play for two minutes. Oh, hard cut. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> play for another couple minutes. Oh, drink, drink. So eventually the platformer got kind of shaky, but that's all right. Yeah. That's, that's okay. That's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> that was that was a good a good time. So now I'm <laughs> this starting. This platformer to... gets a lot more difficult. Yeah. What the hell? Go. Wow. There's <laughs> quite a difficulty curve on this stuff. Like, why is this platform what bouncing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. These shaders why, are awesome, though. Why are the platformers moving? This is, <laughs> didn't move before. Oh, that was a good time. So now I've started playing Everspace, uh, which is like uh, I don't know if either of you have played Descent Free Space. No. I okay. have not. Well, it's a six degrees of freedom space shooter, but mm. it's not like tightly confined to corridors and stuff. You're in pretty much open space. So oh, right it's, on. It's a different kind of concept to the thing, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it was recommended to me by a friend and regular viewer, uh, Valiant Cheese. He said he he warned me like up front, like it's going to be really slow in the beginning, but give it time, it'll kind of build up. And it did. It did. I'm still kind of working through it now. I'm mm-hmm. um, uh, <laughs> so Wednesday was the last stream for it. And I had planned to just stop right there and be like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of through it. I've done everything. Whatever. Let's just move on. Died on the final phase of the final fucking boss. I was oh. like, no, I want to see how this ends. All right. <laughs> we're doing another week. Fuck it. Yeah. So I got to finish that up next week. <laughs> nice. No, it's good. It's good. Um, also, this month of May, I have joined the Schmoop Book Club. Yeah. With EI and crew and Kenny and uh, Zachy and pull up the list of people here. So I don't. Those people. Shout and, out. And Beauty Joe and Firetron and Denier and Finn Kane Bio. <laughs> <laughs> or whoever else joins the voice call, really. We had a really good turnout the first uh first Thursday of May. It's like six or seven people just going, ah fuck shit. Ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Whatever. It was a good time. <laughs> so this month we're doing Axelay, which is a, a SNES uh top down shmup from nineteen ninety two. Nice. It's really good. It's really really good game cemented myself at third place well i guess technically fourth on that board for now we, apparently we start over every month with a different game but apparently there's also a quarterly game so this uh this quarter's game or let's see what it'd be march through june no april through june is ketsui hmm. japanese arcade shooter which is really tough but it's got some really good scoring mechanics to it mm-hmm. that was the one i was playing uh yeah, yeah. Here, visiting um EI yeah, uh, over when I was swearing at Tetris MGC. Yeah. Yes, yes, I had a yes, lot of please. fun playing that one. Yeah, it was great. It, it's good. So I've somehow taken a second place on that oh. for now. Right on behind EI. Yes. <laughs> behind <laughs> yeah. EI. So I, I don't anticipate getting any better than that, which mm-hmm. is fine. Which is fine. I'm actually kind of surprised it's second place, but we still got until end of June for that. So I yeah. expect to fall off of that pretty fucking soon. You're gonna be usurped whatever <laughs> it's better than last i don't care uh and besides that the normal kind of run of uh zelda ltp rando is on saturdays and then the salt Android cactus speed runs on sundays all that so, hot new speed tech though oh my God. there's no new speed. that's the problem like that i have no <laughs> tech whatsoever which yeah. is why so last month we did the sh- super late show on the 27th or whatever mm-hmm. yeah and i think i had set like a a a minute and some pb on some other android or whatever so here's like every time this happens i'm like there's no way in hell that's happening again like i've mm-hmm. reached enough of the plateau to go like that i'm not knocking a minute and change off or whatever but 
I did apparently. Uh, on a Holly run, I knocked a buck thirty off of my PB. So wow, I'm sitting at a forty-seven fifty-nine, which is like three seconds off a world record. Wow, curse you, CJ. <laughs> uh, but it's just like, and the thing is, I don't grind, I don't practice, I don't do routing, I don't do nothing like that. So any PB I get is kind of like oh, neat, right? Okay, on. <laughs> sure, yeah, why I'll not? Take it. And any PB that's like above a buck or something, just like, <laughs> it must have been really <laughs> shitty back. By the way, when I say a buck, I mean a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. In case that wasn't clear. Um, but so it's like any three second PB is great. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. 10 seconds. Oh, oh, all right. 30 seconds. Minute. <laughs> <laughs> what did I so do? You're going to have to go back and watch your run and see what you did. I should, yeah. but I'm not going to. No, fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> side by side, race yourself. I think people have done that. I yeah, mean, yeah I they do. I actually do that, too, because that'd be actually kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have the space on stream to do it, though. It's just, like, kind of hard to just mash cover them up both your together. <laughs> I probably could do that. Nobody wants to see yeah. my face as I'm doing it. It means you could drink more. Well, I mean, I drink, period. So, uh, <laughs> fair. Whether I'm visible or not, yeah. better assume I'd be drinking. Anyways, that's it for the game and stuff. How about round two? All right. Um, round two skis. Ah, uh, nice. Divine Princess of Destiny by Rebecca E. Tripp once again from The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. And a remix from Ask Creed Brotherhood uh, entitled In the Heat of Battle by Jeff Ball and Timaeus222. And I got another Shining Force remix by Grey Lightning called Armageddon. <laughs>
Well, in keeping with the title of uh, this month's, what do we call them? Schmadown. Rounds. Rounds. Yeah. There oh, we go. There. Okay. Uh, yes, I think we do have a couple of yeah. schmadowns to uh, to impart upon you. Mine wasn't even intentionally a schmadown. No? Yeah. Well, you might as well just was. do the thing, man. Well, One of you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I guess you go ahead. What's up? Unless you need some time to pull it up, in which case I can tell another yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got it pulled up right now. Okay, good, because I don't have mine's... stories. Yeah. Mine's <clears throat> relatively short. I don't have a whole lot to cover, uh, but it is uh, a mirror shmup. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of a versus game, uh, where players are on opposite sides of the vertical play field or horizontal because, you know, some home users probably aren't rotating their monitors. True. I mean, Mm. present company excluded. I don't know what you're talking (laughs) about. (laughs) But yeah, so it's, uh, so you're on opposite sides of the play field. Um, and the goal is to obliterate your opponent. Um, enemies will show up flying against, uh, both players, um from opposite sides of the screen so if like you're on the bottom the enemies are going to come from the top and vice versa um you cannot destroy enemies that are not your color so each player is going to have a color that's assigned to them um that kind of makes it very obvious like whose enemies are whose like orange slash green or you know maybe that's not a very friendly color combo but you can choose you know just something kind of opposing Mm -hmm. ireland sure (laughs) Orange, green, and white. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. uh, Destroying enemies that are your own color have a chance to drop power-ups and increase your firepower. So, essentially, it's, you know, you're going to start off with a really dinky weapon um, at the beginning of the match. And the more power-ups you pick up, the more powerful your weapon gets and stuff like that. Um, It's best two out of three matches. Um, So, essentially, like, you know, you'll... You and your opponent will go at it until one of your, you know, one of you explodes, and then end of match, start new match, you know, and that's, you know, the the winners determine best two out of three. Um, and uh, it's not one hit kill like you would expect from most shmups. Um, so and because otherwise it would be like, well, best two out of three is not going to last very long, yeah, is yeah. it? So yeah, so you have a health bar. Uh, each player does. Um, and it kind of shows up on your side of the screen. And, uh, um, yeah, so you get hit, you lose health, you get hit by the enemies that are of your own color, you also lose health, so you're Ooh. battling not only your opponent, but also the AI at the same time. Um, in addition to that, uh, some of the power-ups that you can collect from enemies will change their behavior, like, uh, you might be able to pick up a power-up that instantly turns enemies coming after you into enemies against your opponent ah so like a color swap thing yes or whatever Ooh, yeah and they'll just turn around and like swarm your opponent instead hmm. um so that kind of stuff um and you know like sometimes you'll happen to pound a power up that acts like a like a smart bomb and just you know blows up everything that's you know your color kind of clears your your field for you so that you can easily take you know easy shots at your opponent since the field is clear um there will be a uh, a single play mode, but essentially it's just going to be like survival, you know, because essentially like you know it's it's kind of designed to be like versus game. So single player is more like a more like a bolted on thing than a versus thing, really, or or a practice mode, if you will. Um, and uh, but if an opponent decides to drop a coin in, then it'll it'll you'll kind of play like fighter style, you know, um, uh. like uh, you know. Street Fighter, where a new challenger appears, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, gosh. That reminds me of something I saw. Unfortunately, it was a render. Um, people, of course, because, you know, Smash Brothers oh, is coming out, they're right. making all of their yeah. macros. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, a blast from the past, Chrono. And I'm just like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, no. <laughs> another sword person. <laughs> no, yeah. we don't need those. And also don't put Chrono into Smash because Chrono is pure. Don't do that. Yeah, but Luminaire and, no. oh, that could be such a great Final Smash. Oh, Fox uh. only, Final Destination, no items. Oh, God. <laughs> Master hand only. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and they figured out how to make Master Hand happen in Melee. Apparently, they, they, they did yeah. that, that. They did. Um, so your your versus shmup. How how long do you envision a single match or round? 
or whatever. It's going to be pretty quick because the thing is like your your early shots are going to be kind of weak. Um, you know, but as you pick up more power ups, you're going to do more and more damage. Skillful players are going to be able to dodge that and, you know, like manage um AI enemies pretty quickly and stuff. I get you. But your weapons are going to get to the point where they become extremely dangerous and the AI becomes extremely not. So it's it's base it basically turns into a showdown of like you know who can outmaneuver the other person and get like a massive weapon first. I get you. So um, I think it's really going to come down to like the skill of the players. Like I think that you know early on players are going to be able to you know hit each other a whole lot, um, but the skilled ones are going to last like quite a bit longer. It, it seems then that the player shots would be kind of slow. Much slower than you would expect in a normal shmup where it's player versus like all the enemies. Right. Usually the player bolts are really rapid and quick right. and all that sort of thing. Okay. Right. It's not going to be like the same as a shmup in that regard. It's not going to be like, oh man, I have these obnoxious bullets that can, you know, like they're breaking the sound barrier. Right, right, right. It's, uh, you know, like they're going to be reasonable, but at some point, like your weapon is going to get powerful enough to the point where it's very difficult to evade enemy shots if they can line them up right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, cool. Well, my my schmadown. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's a fun word. I'm gonna keep that one. <laughs> you better call it that. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe I will. Your next Actually, game. Your next game. Upside down. It's James vertical, down. but like you're flying oh, in boy. from. Yeah. No, James down. Oh, James down. I get it. <laughs> that would really fuck with me though. Like I've got so many patterns just etched into my brain like that. I could not do oh, that. Oh my god. I could not do that. But it is kind the of. Game now. It is kind of a schmadown in so much as you're not doing. A lot of shming, yeah. Just downing. You're you're doing a lot of defending and a uh. lot of reflecting and any pretty much anything to evade and and or repel bullets, because this is Schmadown the escort mission, pretty hmm. much. Oh, I don't know how to Why? feel about uh, this. It, 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 it's better. It's okay. better. It's better. You're not like leading something around, but it's uh, a la Missile Command. Have you both of you played Missile oh, Command? Yes. Know of Missile Command? I believe I have. It's okay. a classic. Well, in, in, instead of aiming to destroy all the enemies, you're aiming to protect friendly ships from enemy fire. Mm -hmm. So it's... I, I'm going to go side-scroller because in general terms, usually most of the people at home have you know horizontally laid out displays, as you very aptly pointed out before. Mm -hmm. So you start off, you are escorting a number of friendly ships through... Uh, two, three minutes of bullet hell-ish type stuff where you try to reflect, absorb, or otherwise circumvent these enemy, this enemy fire from hitting the friendly ships. The more ships you successfully uh, escort to the edge of the field, the more points you get, etc., etc. And the game continues as long as you have ships to escort. However, if for some miraculous or stupid reason that all the ships you're escorting get destroyed, that's not the end of the game. You can still survive. If you still manage to survive to the end of the wave, you get one extra ship to escort mm. then and continue the game. But it gets hella harder once it gets to that point. Like There's more enemy ships coming in. They're firing more rapidly. They try mm -hmm. to ram you more frequently, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there is this kind of like one last gasp mode just in case you totally fuck up. Or if you do it intentionally for the rad score bonuses at the end. <laughs> Better be super rad. Oh, they are gonna be. Su they're gonna be the raddest man. Be <laughs> lit and turnt and whatever else the kids use nowadays to describe yeah. stuff that's off the hook and you know whatever. yeah that <laughs> yeah I mean kids still say that right yeah sure <laughs> uh, but the the waves come in multiple tar parts. Uh, the part one is the prep phase. You can arrange the friendly ships. You're gonna escort. Maybe you group them up. Maybe you spread them out. Whatever kind of fits your play style for defending them. You uh, repair uh, your friendly ships. If you come off a wave, they're kind of super damaged. It's not one-hit kills like a normal shmup, like you were saying before, uh, because that would probably end very poorly for everybody involved. Yeah. So you can repair based on you know points or some sort of credits or cash or whatever. Pl plunk another quarter, and you can get a free repair on a ship or something like that. I don't know. Details, details. doesn't matter. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You can also outfit your ship, since you're not shooting anything, you outfit it with any number of defensive items, barriers, shields, uh, engine and movement upgrades, anything to help you evade bullets or guide bullets away from uh, the friendly ships. Then after that begins the action phase. You're actually flying through space or on a planet or whatever, you know, however many themes you want to throw in there, and defending the friendly ships from enemy fire, whether that's going you know, straight form, using your shields and barriers to block it, uh, using some defensive items to kind of alter the bullet's path or something away from the ships, 
or as a last resort, going in and just absorbing the fire yourself. Hopefully, mm-hmm. you don't get killed. Well, but that's a that's a story for another time. That hopefully doesn't happen. Uh, you can also make real time adjustments to friendly ship positions just by kind of edging nearer and nearer to them, and they'll kind of naturally go away from you a little bit, just so you can reposition if a particularly brutal bullet phase comes in. You just gotta rearrange them a little bit. Brutal. Yeah, brutal. That's so metal. <laughs> And then after that, after all is said and done, you get the score phase, where your score counts up based on a, a base score of surviving the wave, plus a multiplier based on how many ships survive the wave along with you, based on, uh, and also an extra score bonus for the amount of health those ships have left, the amount of health that you have left. Uh, say, like in typical shmups, there's the smart bomb thing that clears the screen of bullets or whatever. If you didn't use those, you get an extra bonus. Uh, if you get to certain kind of score tiers or or, or uh, uh, score limits, you get extra friendly ships to to defend later on. So you kind of build up this cache of reserve ships or whatever, like Missile Command again. Very heavy inspiration here. Mm-hmm. And the part four, the emergency phase, which I already kind of covered, where if uh, all your friendly ships that you're escorting get destroyed, you have a last-ditch effort of surviving just yourself to get to the end of the wave and then get another bonus ship so they can continue going. Uh, your ship, uh, probably you get probably the standard three lives where mm-hmm. you know once all those are gone and all the en- all the friendly ships are gone, that's the end of the game, and that's your score. Leaderboards, dailies, weeklies, whatever. Yeah, add that shit on top because I love me some arcade stuff like that. Cool, and that's it. So, um, are do you only ever have the chance of getting an additional ship if you make it through the emergency stage or? You just like continually get more ships. Uh, as as long as you pass like those score, those score uh, okay. things. So this, the, when you get higher scores, you don't get ships that you control. You get the ships that you escort. Right. Okay. So you only have your your three player ships or whatever. But then you continue to get more and more and more as you go along. As as long as you get to those score barriers like thirty thousand, seventy, hundred twenty, okay. whatever. Like the t- the typical shmup progression. Or, I'm sorry, down progression. <laughs> And that's it. Any other questions, comments? I'd play it. So would I. I yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cool. Yeah. You shma down with it? I am shma down with it. I'm very shma down with it. <laughs> uh, had to. <laughs> We're all getting the puns in tonight. All right. I'm, I'm assuming you don't have a shma down. No. Because that's not really your thing. I mean, maybe someday. But right now, I've got a meta RPG. Meta Wait, RPG. Let me let me sit down first. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's it's an RPG of an RPG. <laughs> so oh, it's called Chronicles of an Innkeeper, hmm. and All it can right. be one to five players, with one player being you know the innkeeper, the other players being the people that the innkeeper kind of mentors and brings out to the world because you know they're the warriors of light, whatever. And uh, yeah. So first, let's let's go on how you actually play the game. It's gamepad, keyboard, and mouse. I expect this to be very DOS-like. I want this to have, you know, like you old commands of verbs at the bottom of the screen. You tell it what to do. <laughs> Lucasfilm. Okay. Yeah, it's very similar. <laughs> so graphic style, Monkey Island-esque as is the audio. Point of view, some menus, some top-down, some talking heads, cutscenes, that kind of thing. So the story for this game, unbeknownst to anyone else in the world, you are the god of all that is right and good. You serve the people of your world as a simple innkeep, guiding adventurers to succeed in their fight against the malady plaguing the world, etc. You know, the whole trope. <laughs> While these adventurers appreciate your wisdom, they're ignorant to your true title. You guide new groups of adventurers into the world, helping as much as you can with the goal of returning the world to peace and prosperity. Of course. Okay, true. Da, 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 da. Anyway, yeah. Uh, hook. Use wisdom and manipulation to influence characters, either NPCs or player characters, to choose, jo- or choose job classes that fit their backgrounds best, but also manipulate RNG itself in their training process to boost their abilities and stats, as well as provide helpful items to aid along in their success. So literal bless RNG. Yes. Yeah. All right. I can dig that. <laughs> so you are metagaming in such that you can see what the randomizer is going to do to them, but you can alter the randomizer in some way with your own abilities. Huh. Huh? So the inventory here is obviously, you know, the God character has magic dice abilities with cooldowns, a crystal ball or whatever, whatever. You might be able to see these like intertwinings of things. A crystal something. Yeah, well, yeah of course. The adventurers yeah. will have weapons, armor, spells, utility items, so on and so forth. So mechanics here are you aid the adventurers by making magic dice rolls to pad permanent statistics 
and also assisting character RNG events such as spell casting, success rates of skills, so on and so forth. So and as you level, the abilities that you get will also level. So it's going to be kind yeah. of Fire Emblem esque in that sense, where you have like you know your eight stats. Good luck getting plus ones in all of them. You'll never will. Reset without yeah <laughs> yeah. So one of those things that I want the god character to be able to do is actually kind of do resets. So, like, you bring it back five minutes or something like that, or mm -hmm. you just reset a dungeon or you, like, reset a person entirely and just make the other one poof. But the objective here is bring peace and calm to a land ravaged by evil and chaos with your magic dice. That's pretty much it. No? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that that's that's it. So where do the other player characters fit into this? So obviously you got the one playing the god innkeeper, right? Right. How Morgan the... Freeman. Oh boy. Uh, that would be a trick to get him yeah. to do the voice, wouldn't right? It? So oh my. that's that was almost George K. I'm sorry. It is. Yeah. Like I can't like I can't separate those two now. I'm sorry. That's fair. Um like, the player what, characters what So like say for instance, like your player characters start off in some sort of like freelancers school or whatever and they show aptitude for certain things based on initial dice rolls and you can choose mm -hmm. whether to continue them down that path or to sway them to do something else cause them to have certain accidents or whatever in their lives to in order for them to like totally shift their objective and I things see. like that npcs would be kind of the same thing so the the, the other like the player the non-god player characters don't really see the influence of the god player character is that right uh well i mean like not over. I guess like meta gaming could happen, but they're not supposed to be able to see okay. that stuff. Yeah. So that makes more sense. But they might be like, "Oh, look! They must have gotten a high roll because suddenly my character sheet's different, or something." Yeah, mm, I see. So they, the the people playing it, would be able to see, it, but their characters are supposed to be ignorant to it. So, and the players are kind of supposed to infer what the god character is, or the god player, I guess is trying to do essentially but it's not direct like oh suddenly you should be a warrior instead of a mage etc yeah kind of okay. mm -hmm. that's pretty much it ah, i did ah, cool yeah cool all right we're coming to the end of around 56 mm -hmm. down Indeed. down oh, i like that word uh any other final closing thoughts anything we gotta prepare the the people for next time nope Yep. Now, if I get More started, puns. you won't be able to shut me up. So Fair enough. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for watching and or listening, everybody. I'm Mr. Bond. I'm Tormod. And I'm Saxon. We'll leave you with our typical closing track, a remix from Mario Kart Wii entitled Wind in Your Hair by Overclocked University. Good night, everybody. Ciao. Adios. Adios.